Welcome to the Unpacking the Teaks training conducted by myself, Tina Harris. I am one of the A2E2 master teachers here at the high school, DeSoto High School. Now, um, the objective of this training is to explore the process of unpacking the teaks. And by the end of this process, the end of this training, we should be able to use the steps discussed um, to unpack in upcoming teaks. We're going to do four things today. We're going to identify and define components of the teaks. What are they? We're going to analyze key terms in the teaks. We're going to break those teaks down into smaller components or parts, and then we're going to examine how the teaks are assessed. Now, only two of them are really what when we say unpacking the teaks, are really the steps of unpacking the teaks. Number two and number three. Unpacking the teaks requires you to analyze key terms in the teaks and to break down these teaks into smaller components. The other things are just, you know, foundational things. You need to know what um, teaks are, and you should, once you unpack a teak, examine how the teaks are assessed. So let's start with the first thing. Let's define some things. Standards. Standards are TEKS. TEKS represents the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. These are, these are the particular um, topics that the, the state has designated as, um, has assigned us to teach our students each particular year. So each grade level, each content ha has their own respective TEKS. And no, it's not TEK, it's TEKS, because skills is important also. Not only are the students required to learn something, they have to be able to do something also. That is designated by the state. We take that information as a district, and our district personnel creates the curriculum. This um, tells us when we should do it, so it, it um, creates a scope and sequence. It's what we're covering, how, uh, how long we have to cover it. Um, and then as a teacher, this is what we do. We are responsible for instructing to students. This is the art of teaching. We have to take certain strategies, certain methods, certain uh, things, and we have to make sure that the students are understanding what they are responsible for knowing and are able to do what they're responsible for doing, those knowledge and skills. And then we assess. Many the assessments occur on many levels. The state has their own assessment. That's the STAR or EOC, depending on what grade level. The district has their assessments. These, these are typically the common assessments, and the teacher should be assessing on a regular basis, not just tests, not just quizzes, but throughout the lesson, we should be checking for understanding. All of those are considered um, assessments. Once everything is, is said and done, everything has to be working in alignment with each other. If anyone's off doing their own thing and is not aligned, chaos ensues, and this is a lot of times how students are um, do not learn exactly what it is that they're supposed to learn and they're not successful on their assessments. So we have to make sure our curriculum, our assessment, and our instruction, all of these things contribute to the learning process. Now when we talk about TEKS, TEKS are broken down into three components. There's the strand, which is the most general aspect of the TEKS. Um, you have the knowledge and skill statements and you also have the student expectation. And it looks like this. The strand is here, it's history, it's fourth grade history. My knowledge and skill statement is this general statement here. In this case, is the student understands the political, economic, and social changes in Texas during the last half of the 19th century. That is very broad. The last, last half of the 19th century implies five, uh, 500 years. So I need to know, as a teacher, I need you to be more specific, uh, specific state. What do you want me to focus on? And that's when we bring in our SEs, our student expectations. And this breaks it down a little bit more. Okay, what are we focusing on? The student needs to describe the impact of the Civil War and reconstruction on Texas and so forth. So we go from the most broad, we're talking about history. What part of history? We're talking about this part. What well, specifically within that part? We're talking about this part. Broad to the most specific. Now, the next step is to analyze key terms that are found in um, our TEKS. So the three things that you really need to zero in on when you're looking at your TEKS. You want to make sure you identify your verbs. We typically circle verbs. So you want to identify what those students need to be able to do. That's what the verbs are. Verbs are action words. So what actions do the students need to be able to um, perform? We need to identify the concept. This is generally the, the, the topic they're studying, the main point. 
of whatever you're covering. And we typically underline those. The context gives me parameters of what I need to cover. So I'm talking about this is the topic. This is what the student needs to be able to do with the topic. And this is the context that goes along with it, the details specific to the lesson. So it gives me parameters. And what we typically do for context is we box the context. So let's look at an example here. This example is a seventh grade math um, teaks. You have the strand here, and then you have the skills and knowledge and skills statement, and then you have your two SCs here. So what I do first is I identify the verbs, and I go in and I circle the verbs. So this is solves, that is a verb. And what are they solving? Uh, what else are they doing? They're connecting here. And what else are they doing? They're estimating here, and they're solving again. So once I identify all my verbs within my knowledge and skills statement, my knowledge and skills statement, my student expectations, I move on to the concept. So once I have identified my verbs, I look at the verbs and I define them. This is one of the steps that oftentimes we do not do. And what they are, are uh, often we have misnomers. A misnomer is a word that is used incorrectly. So maybe I think connecting means one thing, but in but Webster, in this case, says it means to make a logical connection, to join, link, or fasten together. So it's a good practice that once we identify the verbs, we go and we define them, figure out what they actually mean, because that's going to be important. If I'm the student is responsible for making connections on the assessment, well, if I taught my lesson thinking that it was one way, but they're assessed a different way, there's a concern here. It's a breakdown. So once you identify your verbs, best practice is to go and define them. Once I've identified the verbs, my next step, step two, is to um, identify the concepts. Typically, the concepts follow the verb. My verb here was solve. So well, what am I solving? Application problems. So I'll underline that. My verb was connect. So what am I connecting? Models for volume. And I'm connecting formulas. So in this case, I have two different um, topics that I'm, uh, concepts that I'm actually uh, applying to this particular verb. What am I estimating? I'm estimating measurements. What am I solving? I'm once again solving application problems. So after you figure out what your verbs are and you've defined them you identify the concepts now um i i can make sure i i can develop a lesson here or at least the the framework of a lesson because then i'm going and i'm focusing on models how do i know because it said that in the teaks i'm focusing on formulas i'm focusing on measurements and i'm focusing focusing on application problems now here is my problem right here with the measurements because if I go back, it says estimate measurements. So my question is, when I see that, are my students measuring or are they given measurements? That would be a real question. It's a good question. And I should ask that question. So where would I find the answer for that? The best way of finding the answer is to look at the release assessment test. So go to the assessments and see how they're actually presented to the students to see if they're actually having to go and determine the measurements or estimate the measurements, or if they are given uh, measurements and they have to estimate from there. So always, when there's something that needs to be clarified, look at the release test. Now, once I figure out my verb, I'm solving, I figure out my concept, what am I solving? Application problems. I gotta put myself, and I have to give myself parameters. What does this encompass? So what am I going to solve? Which, what applications am I solving? So my applications are um, involving estimation and measurement. And notice how we box them. This gives me parameters. So application problems could be so broad. It could be any kind of problems, right? But I only want to focus on estimation and measurement problems. Now I need to get more specific, OK? So I said we're connecting. And what were we, were we connecting? Models of for volume and formulas. So models for volume, volumes are what? It tells me here, prisms. What kind of prisms? Triangular and rectangular. And also cylinder, volumes for cylinder. What kind of formulas do I need? Prisms. What kind of prisms? Triangular and rectangular. 
and I also need cylinders. So my my context gives me my parameters. You all this work needs to be within this parameter. It's my situation. What am I estimating? I'm um, I'm estimating measurements. I'm solving application problems, and these are all involved in volume of prisms and cylinders. So from there, I have pretty much my whole lesson. I could really, I could really, um, I could really um, start creating my lesson. But the next step helps me focus even more because what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down my essays into smaller statements. So here's another um, TEX. This one is a fifth grade science TEX. Here's my strand, 5.9 organisms and environments. Here's my um, knowledge and skill statement. The student knows that there are relationships, systems, and cycles within environments. The students is expected to. In this case, I have only one SE student expectation identified. And for the rest of this, we're only going to focus on the SE. So when I look at the student ex and um, student expectation, I notice it says identify the significance of the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle to the survival of plants and animals. When I go and I apply my um, terms, I, I identify the, the verb. The verb here is identify. What am I identifying? It's my concept. And the significance of the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle is my concept. What are my contextual components? So what is this dealing with? It's dealing with the survival of plants and animals. So I have one verb, one main topic or concept, but I have two contextual um, parts. So what I need to do is split this uh, up a little bit more so that when I go teach, I am focusing on these this skill that they need to do, covering this concept, but applying it to both plants and applying it to animals. So when I break it down, it looks like this. I'm identifying the significance of, significance of the carbon dioxide oxygen, oxygen cycle to the survival of plants, but I'm also identifying the significance of the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle to the survival of animals. So when I develop my lesson dealing with this particular um, SE, I need, I need to make sure that when I do this, that I'm all focusing on plants, but I'm also focusing on animals. If I do not, what I've done is I have not taught all of my STEAKs, which is quite often what happens, especially with veteran teachers, because when we if we don't go back and review the, the standards on a regular basis, we may forget that the standard encompasses way more than just one item. If I'm preferential to animals, I may not teach plants because I really have a lot of activities I love with the animals. But if I do that, once again, I am not teaching my entire TEKS. And therefore, when the test comes and they're asking questions about plants, my students may not be successful. And I did all that work and the students did all that work, but they still come out not successful because I didn't address each component of the TEKS. So here's another one. It's another um, science um, standard. So this is eighth grade, force and motion and energy. That's my... Um, strand. My skills, knowledge and skill statement is the student knows that there is a relationship between force, motion, and energy. The student is expected to. I have one SE student expectation here identified. And this has a lot of stuff in it. So I need to make sure that I break it down. So my first thing I do is identify the verbs. What are the students expected to do? They're expected to demonstrate and calculate. What are they expected to demonstrate and calculate? How unbalanced um, forces change the speed or direction of an object's motion. So my verbs are demonstrate and calculate. My concept is unbalanced forces. And my contextual information is change the speed or direction of an object's motion. I have two verbs, one concept, but I have two cont contextual parts changing the speed or the direction. So here's my math problem. If I have two different verbs and two contextual parts, how many smaller statements am I going to have? Two times two gives me four. Two of my um, statements will be demonstrating and two of my statements will be calculating. So what am I demonstrating? How unbalanced forces change the speed and how unbalanced forces change the direction. 
What am I calculating? How unbalanced forces change the speed and what and how um, unbalanced forces change the direction. So I have four different parts. When I develop my lesson, I have to make sure that I spend ample time on each one of these parts. Demonstrate how um, demonstrating unbalanced forces regard with regard to speed and direction and also calculating with speed and direction in mind. If I do not address all four parts, I have not fully taught my TEKS. Therefore, when my students take their assessment, it's a possibility that they would not score well because I didn't teach them everything in that standard. <clears throat> so our last thing that we should do is we should always go once we have um, we have identified the verbs, identified the concepts, we've um, identified the contextual parts, we've broken everything down to smaller components. Then we should go and we should see how it's assessed on the um, EOC. So in this case, I'm going to take this particular um, essay, fifth grade science. What I like to do is I like to go to lead forward. Lead forward. Leadforward.com is a great resource for any particular district. And this um, this resource has many things. That, uh, and one of the things that it has is it has snapshots. So what I do is I go to leadforward.com. I go to where it says resources. I scroll down. Now I can see the first column deals with my grade level. Second column is my snapshot, so I'm going to grab something from here. The third level deals with scaffolding. Uh, the fourth is vocabulary, and the fifth one is student learning reports. All I need is a snapshot. So I'm going to go down to fifth grade science in the, in the second column, and I'm going to pull the snapshot. 